One of the exciting things about SiliconANGLE Media, Wikibon, and theCUBE is all the events we go to and all the content that we share for free, and that has changed certainly the dynamics of events, but it actually helps people, and I want to get some thoughts. I've heard things like the Cube is everywhere, and so many people come up to me and say, thanks for that content in real time, in the moment, felt great, it's fresh, and it's great data. But Dave, you're close to a lot of our clients and end users, you're out in the field every day. What are you hearing? What success metrics and proof points, social proof, real proof, value, ROI, anything that you can share about the, what SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, and the Cube has delivered for folks? Well, I, I love this discussion, John, because I, I'll give you a, a few examples. One is, I can't tell you how many times people come up to me and say, I just joined company X, and what put me over was when I watched the Cube interviews with the executives and their customers, and I saw the passion, and it really sold me on that company. You guys do a, a great job of, of exploring. It's not just canned questions. It's, it's, it's a free form and, and it was, you know, really helped me decide on what my next job was going to be. So I love that, that example. I think the other one is practitioners or what we call doers coming on theCUBE and sharing, you know, what they're doing, what, how they're innovating. And one that strikes me and, and John, I'm sure you remember is Alan Nance, who's the CIO of infrastructure at Philips, huge, you know, global, multi-billion dollar company, talking about how they are, we're cutting the cord and going completely to the cloud, requiring all their vendors to go to the cloud. This was several years ago when, when that was a pretty radical move. And then after theCUBE, we collaborated with, with Alan, because he was part of our network. We wrote, we shared, you know, videos. We were uh, out on social together, really helping advance his vision and sharing his knowledge with other companies. And I think the third is the tech athletes that, that we have on, in addition to the practitioners like, like Alan, it's the technologists that are leading innovation in the industry. And I'll give you a couple of examples there. The first time we ever did Hadoop World, the vast majority of the people out there didn't know what Hadoop was. We had people like Mike Olson on and Doug Cutting who were helping us sort of educate the marketplace. Recently, uh, John, you and I at uh, HPE Discover with Dr. Tom, IOT is such a hot thing. We did a sort of little tutorial on IOT. Uh, recently at Spark, you guys did Spark Summit West, we did Spark Summit East. So many examples of helping people not only get educated, but understand how to apply technology to create a business capability. Yeah, Jeff, I want to ask you a question because you deal a lot of the events, and certainly you work with a lot of the sponsors as well that come in and, and, and have collaborated with this new sponsorship model where they want to support the Cube, almost like an open source project, if you will. So they get uh, the, to, to support our needs to get to the events. We can do all that great original content and independent reporting. Um, but they get benefits out of that. Can you share, Jeff, the, I mean, I know you've done a great job with your team of getting the content out on the, out on the network fast. It's one of those things that you've been working hard on, you've been delivering amazing results, content hits the network instantly, certainly Cube cards with the photos, you mentioned Cube gems. But the sponsors who work with us, what are the, what's the benefits to them that, that you can share that you've seen? Uh, th there's a number of them. Obviously, just at its most basic core, they get great content. They get, they get content that they can't get anywhere else. One of my favorite stories to follow up on what Dave talked about is we had a customer on one time, and, and I was not on the set, and I was talking to kind of the customer handler at the count. And she said, uh, yeah, I'm the one who makes our customers do unnatural acts. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> she goes, the little vignettes that we shoot for the keynotes that go in between the keynotes are a nightmare for the customers. They, they, they can't get the script right, they, they stumble, we shoot them over and over, it's an absolute nightmare. At the same time we had her customer on the cube, she was grinning from ear to ear and having just a fantastic experience. So, the, the customer testimonials that we get out of the cube, I really think are second to none, and it's something I'm really proud of, and I really like to share. And 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 really, some of my my most favorite moments on the cube are talking to people uh, and learning things from these these doers that we never knew. I mean, we were at EMC World a couple of years ago, and I was joking. We went from Sheboygan to the Vatican. We had a guy from Johnsonville, Bratz in Wisconsin, talking about using technology and transforming their company all the way to a guy from the Vatican who's responsible for digitizing and storing all these uh, assets that were in possession from the, from the Vatican. At the same show, we talked to a guy that ran parking garages and parking garage technology, which if you think in San Francisco and New York City is a huge business. So again, we get these really fantastic stories 
uh, from their customers, which I think are second to none. They get the assets. They get much better coverage inside the show itself. Consistently, at any show we're at, the Cube Twitter handle, which is really used as the voice of the Cube in social media, will always be in the top five, if not higher, because again, we're not sharing come to my booth, come win an iPad. I guess people are probably giving away drones now. It's really the top people saying great, compelling things that the audience is interested in. So I think really that's uh, just, just the tip of the iceberg. And then again, John, just purely for the asset value, if you were to hire somebody to go film, make a white paper, do a customer testimonial, it costs a lot of money. And because of the magic of the cube, the magic of the format, the magic of the way we treat people, and also the informed nature of our hosts, we just get stuff that nobody else gets, John. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's fun magic to see. Certainly that real time, in the moment assets and digital assets that hit the network have a lot of benefits. Super exciting, Jeff, congratulations. Keep up the good work. Peter Burris, you've been tracking digital, and certainly the, the dynamic of these new digital assets, as Jeff was saying, it's in the moment, these things are happening. A new force is existing out there with control. The brands are no longer in control. You're seeing a shift with crowdsourcing, with the connected consumer, whatever term you want to use, a new source of relevance, a new dynamic is, is, is putting big brands on their heels, the advertisers, the brand marketers, folks that traditionally used to market to, at events is changing. How is the digital assets in the moment, in real time, changing the dynamic between consumer, the like, ultimate end customer, and the brand? Well, the most important point, John, is that if the digital asset is produced in a form that someone can apply it to their challenge, they'll use it. We've seen that over and over. The social graph of how commerce works, of how people are exploring options, how people are taking action is rewiring as a consequence of digital technologies. But context remains very important. Ultimately, people choose to enter into relationships based on what they're trying to do. And if digital assets make it possible for two or more individuals or businesses to be able to say, that's what I want to do, it facilitates the creation of a relationship that then can have significant commercial value. And so by doing a better job of capturing this content that's in the moment, producing it so that it is easily distributed, so that the range of folks who can, uh, cap can use it is infinite, and then making it possible for it to be embedded in how work gets done, that's the special sauce, that's the magic. A new way to engage, a new way to distribute content, a new way to create content. Dave, super exciting. Any thought, final thoughts on your end around this new way and benefits to brands and people who work with us? Any final thoughts? Well, John, having worked with you now since uh, early 2010, I, it's been really a pleasure to grow a team with you, to create new capabilities. Uh, and now I'm really excited about bringing those together in, in, a, in a platform that can help advance this whole digital rev revolution. And I'm really excited about SiliconANGLE Media's role uh, in that, uh, combining you know, great content with really easy to use software and platforms and communities. Uh, so it's really been a pleasure. And I'm looking forward to the next 10 years. We've had great growth, Dave. Nice, slow and steady, profitable, uh, and more importantly, seven years and we've had really no churn in terms of our customer and sponsor base. I want to thank them and anyone who's been on theCUBE, thousands of people we've personally interviewed, uh, continues to keep the train rolling. I'm super, super excited to continue that. And again, the magic of communities is if you do good work, the cream will rise to the top. If you extract the signal from the noise, great things will happen. Certainly we're betting the business on that. Again, radical new way to do things, both the technology platform, the technology model, the business model, and ultimately giving back. And it's going to be great with a new community, vibrant community. And we're so super excited. Thanks for everything. And Peter, welcome aboard.